Hello and welcome to another episode of the Popcorn Conspiracy. I'm Dave G and joining me tonight is my co-host. Hello everybody, I'm Kyle. And tonight we're taking a look at the brand new Australian horror film Blackwater Abyss. Now of course this is a follow-up to the original Blackwater film that was made over a decade ago. It shares the same director with Andrew Trauke. Uh Trauke, of course, has become quite a successful Aussie horror filmmaker. He filmed The Reef, he's filmed The Jungle, and he did uh, one of the chapters of ABCs of Death a few years ago. But uh, this film, it's coming out with a bit of speculation behind it, because this movie is... Uh, getting a global release which is very unusual for an Australian film these days but this film is opening in Thailand it's opening in other Asian countries it's uh, in America the UK and or right across Europe it's opening in cinemas so the film itself centers around Eric and Jennifer played by Luke Mitchell and Jessica McNamee now they're a couple whose uh, friend Cash played by Anthony J Sharp comes to them and says, look, I found this cave in Queensland, let's go and explore it. Now, he has found it because he was looking for two missing Asian tourists. Uh, they decide that they're going to rope in two of their friends, Victor, played by Benjamin Hoshis, and Yolanda, played by Amali Golden. They're all going to investigate this cave to see what is down there and whether it can become a, uh, a tourist destination. But there are secrets there as well. Uh, Victor's got just recovered from um, chemotherapy, and there's a little bit of a secret that the couples share between them. Things go horribly wrong, though, as they go down into the caving system. The water starts to rise, and very, very soon they find themselves trapped in a cave with a killer crocodile. Now, mate, I've got to ask, uh, what do you think of Blackwater Abyss? Because, uh, yeah, as you'll find out as... We're talking about this a little bit. I'm not quite as bought on this as what I thought I was going to be. Yeah, um, I thought it was kind of like a, a, a passable uh, horror film. Like, I, I kind of, I can't help but look at some of these movies and say, oh, well, you know, kind of a lower budget and like just kind of looking at how they handle um, special effects and uh, gore and stuff like that and kind of giving them a little bit of a, a leeway for that. Um, I, I never saw the original Blackwater movie, so even though it's directed by the the same director, I can't really say how much like how well this one stacks up against the the original. Um, but I, I do I do think that this one was it, it, it felt very similar to um, the movie. Uh, oh God, what was the name of it? Uh, Crawl. Uh, it yep. reminded me very much of the movie Crawl, and I I think we both liked uh, last year. It, it's very it's very different, like on the on the surface, but um, I guess just the idea of characters kind of being trapped in a location by a flood, and they're at risk of being eaten by uh, alligators or crocodiles. Um, like the setup is very different, but uh, um, I think uh, the way that Kroll handled a lot of elements to do with story as well as I guess the 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 action. Um, it just it made it a lot more of an enjoyable film than than this one. Um, I do think this one kind of uh, it it did like listening to you uh, describe the characters and stuff. I I think you were you gave a lot more uh, you're a lot more charitable towards the uh, description of the characters than I would have been. <laughs> uh, I I just thought there wasn't really much to the characters in this film, and even the um, the the action I didn't think there was much much to that. Um, I thought they kind of even even to the point of kind of wasting the uh, the uh, the whole setup of, of these kind of cave uh, spelunkers, um, cave explorers being trapped underground, and I thought that was actually that could have worked for a really a really intense claustrophobic uh, like horror movie, but. I don't know, I think it just kind of missed the mark uh, quite a bit, even though I, I did think that there were pretty... It, it was... The use of crocodiles, like, uh, not a whole lot of CGI, and um, using actual, like, real crocodile footage here and there, I thought that was actually done pretty well, like, all things considered, like, um, as far as the budget of this movie goes, you know? Uh, but, yeah, otherwise, I just thought that it was... Yeah, I thought it, it kind of really didn't have much to the story and um i guess it was just kind of a, a 
an entertaining enough uh, Aussie film, but not not really anything spectacular. Yeah, I, I really liked the original Blackwater. Um, the original Blackwater came out at the same time as Rogue. The other crocodile horror film and a lot of croc films. Yeah, um, so because Rogue went on to be like a bit of a, a box office success, I think because it, it, of the people that were in the movie, it had a a kind of more well known cast than uh, Blackwater. But I actually preferred Blackwater to Rogue because I found Rogue to be kind of like your popcorn kind of horror where. Um, they had actors in there who were deliberately try, trying to play the comedic kind of thing to lighten it a little bit, whereas Blackwater was just the basic storyline of a group of people go out in a tinny in a mangrove swamp and it capsizes and they get trapped in a tree um, with a killer croc. And it was one of those movies where it was a, it was a slow burn watch because you're basically watching people trapped in a tree, but the suspense was there because it's like you would keep on having like one of the characters going nah i think i think i might um try and make a a run for it kind of thing and it really worked and andrew trauke does that a lot with his movies his movies are quite often a bit of a slow burn like the reef was the same um for those who haven't seen the reef the reef told uh was loosely based on the story of the the tourists up on the, um, up in far north Queensland that got left, um, behind by a tourism operator and they were scuba diving and they got left in the water and in the reef, in the movie that Andrew Trauke made, there was a, a shark, uh, swimming around them. Um, but this movie to me, I don't know, it, maybe it's because it's not written by Trauke that it had two separate writers, but it almost didn't feel like an Andrew Trauke film. Um, I found the characters here very, um, very one dimensional, but I also found the script to be completely unbelievable because I know guys who do this for a living that investigate caves and there is no way on hell they would ever go down in a cave system when there's bad weather, um, around. Like there's a throwaway line in this where one of the characters says, oh no, that storm is a long way away uh, it, it, it's fine it, it's not going to hit here until later but people that explore these kinds of caves would not say that because they never know which caving systems are linked so if there's any hint of rain anywhere they do not go down in a cave that they've never been down in before um and i just found that really unbelievable the same with the um uh there's a part in this movie where there's like, that's supposed to create tension between the couples and it, it, there's no hint of it earlier on. And it just feels kind of like it's suddenly been thrown in there to ramp up the suspense of the movie. And I don't know. I just, I didn't like it. Like for me, Andrew Trauke can normally get that kind of suspense just out of the situation that his characters are in. He doesn't need that kind of thing thrown in there and like you said before with crawl the the way that they did crawl was that it was almost like a video game every time that they thought they found a way that they were going to be able to get out something would would stop that and i just i just found blackwater abyss just a, a lazily kind of written film that didn't really hold my interest until like the last 15 minutes of the film and then things started to happen that I was like, why the hell didn't this happen earlier? So yeah, I did not like it compared to the film that was its predecessor at all. Yeah. Well, I, I can see like Trauke's uh, ability uh, behind the camera because I, I thought that the actors actually did a, a decent job and he was able to get um, uh, good performances out of his actors. But yeah, I, I was very uh, just, kind of underwhelmed by by the script and and the story uh yeah like you say just the whole there's there's really not much to any of the characters in their relationships with each other um like other than one of them is pregnant and her boyfriend doesn't know it first like it, it leads to some tensions later on but uh, like it's more melodramatic than anything like all things yeah. considered and uh yeah, other things like, yeah, the, the, one of the characters being in remission from chemo and 
and pledge him to do more with his life, that doesn't really go anywhere. And, like, there's, there's not much to it. Like, it, it, it's a pity because I think, um, like, this movie really would have benefited from being a lot more character-driven. Like, a, um, a lot of the movie is spent trying to find a way out of the cave or being stalked by a crocodile, and it gets really samey after a while because, uh, well, basically they find themselves in a, in like a giant chasm and then there's some kind of massive flood due to the, the, uh, the storm outside and they're kind of trapped in this kind of this giant area. And that's kind of a hub area that they're in for the majority of the movie. Um, one of the characters is injured and he can't leave and, so it, it's really t- the the plot of the movies. Basically, they're stuck in this area, and every now and then they'll think, "Okay, well we'll try to f- we'll try to escape this way. We'll try to f- go out the way that we came." Oh, we, oh, we can't do that. So, and then it, they they come back, and right as they come back, then they've discovered another possible way out, another potential escape route, and then they try that, and that doesn't work, and then they come back, and it's like. It felt very um, like and, and like while that's happening, it, it cut that. There's kind of just a lot of stuff going on, which I think is just, I guess, just to give the characters things to do. Like the characters who is going through chemo, of course, he is asthmatic, and so there's this whole sequence where they're trying to get, like characters on one side of this chasm that's flooding are trying to get. Uh, his uh, inhaler to him, and, and it involves him trying to like, like throw it, throw it across. Oh, it doesn't work. We've got to try to swim across and try not to not to um, alert the crocodile to our to our presence. And there's a lot of kind of things that just I don't know a lot of like busy work for the characters to be doing. Like yeah. not really anything that that um, really is it was very interesting. I thought that was it was a real pity because. Um, like I really would have, what I would have really liked to have seen is, uh, for the, the characters be stuck in this cave. I I think the idea of the characters being stuck in this cave and being stalked by a crocodile is pretty, pretty cool. Like it was an interesting setup. Um, but I think that they should have really kind of moved from, uh, location to location as the film went on. Like that's something that, like you brought up, that's something that crawl did where uh, they weren't just stuck under the house like with the crocodile the entire movie they're trying to get out of the house and then they get out and then they end up getting pushed back into it and then they're they're in they're still in the house but now they're upstairs and it's like i know that movie had a much bigger budget but uh, like just it wasn't just characters stuck in this one location for the entire film um like what i what this one i think could have potentially done is maybe played up the the danger of the cave itself like yeah um like the cat like the crocodile is uh, is more dangerous because they're in a they're stuck in a cave and it's kind of there and it's the crocodile's uh uh habitat and and there's the flood going on but at the same time the crocodile could be making the cave more dangerous because they're trying to they're they're like being forced to explore this cave that they don't know they don't they don't know which way they go, they're going they could end up becoming trapped and like there could have been a whole lot more um like a lot more tense claustrophobic scenes in in the movie than there than there actually was like characters like because i've heard a lot of stories about like um cave explorers becoming trapped down in caves and like just being lost down there like that's horrifying you know yeah. like I think they really could have played up a, a, a lot more of that, um, and the, the I mean they didn't in this in the movie. It's really anybody that dies. This movie has like kind of a decent body count, I guess, but everybody just dies because of the crocodile. Like yeah. nothing else happens other than that, and yeah. yeah, just just not a whole lot of stuff going on in the movie to to really keep you entertained. And they could have really played that up too, because I've got a funny feeling that one of the reasons why this movie was snapped up so quickly in Thailand by um, cinemas was because, of course, uh, two years ago in Thailand, they had the, the caving disaster where the uh, the soccer team got trapped in the cave. And 
they made a fantastic movie that came out in Thailand last year based on that, and the suspense that came through that was absolutely fantastic, and I thought they could have played up a little bit more with this movie as well, because they could have also played up the tension more between the characters, because they do actually have really good actors in this. Um, yeah. Jessica McNamee has shown with her television work in Australia that she's a decent actress. Luke Mitchell came back from the US to do this movie. Like, he's been in the US doing um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., he's in Blind Spot. he's in The Code. Like, he's made a name for himself over there. He's a, a good enough actor that he could have uh, played around with it as well. Um, and, yeah, that's why I thought it just... It kind of was disappointing that the the bit of tension that they threw in there came in so late that it didn't have, like, an impact, really. It was kind of like, oh, yeah, really? That's what happened kind of thing? But as an audience member, whereas I think they could have had hints of that, like, a lot um, earlier on to, to give the audience a bit of a feel that, yeah, there's there's something not right between these couples um, at the moment. Uh, having said that, what did you think of the, the horror sequences, like the... And let's be honest, most people are going to go and see this movie because they want to see a croc attack someone. So, yeah. what did you think of those sequences? How did Andrew Trowkey deal with them? I thought that what there was in the movie was done pretty well. Um, there, there wasn't a whole lot... Like, this isn't really a, a heavily gory film. I mean, something, again, to... I'm sorry to keep going back to The Abyss. and Not The Abyss. Um, uh, crawl. Um... To, to keep going back to crawl, but I think something that we were that we were kind of talking about with that movie was that that film had really just two uh, two main characters, and everybody else was really uh, just fodder, you know. So they could really play up the crocodile tearing people up and, and stuff like that. Uh, this movie, there's five main characters, and that's it. Like, there's no small supporting characters. And so because the movie only really has five main characters and um, it doesn't really do a whole lot with with any of them, uh, because of that, it, it goes quite a while without any real horror or gore. Yeah. Um, like, I, I do think that there's quite a... Like, you ha the... You do see the two um, the two Asian tourists at the beginning being, uh, being attacked by the croc. And that's kind of like just to give us a a hint of uh, of the danger that the, char that the character is going to be in. But to be honest, those those characters actually, um, to go back to kind of the, how underwritten the, the stories and the, uh, the characterization was, those two characters at the beginning are about as, as well-defined or about as deep as the film's actual main characters. Yeah. So, um, like, even though they're only just kind of, blank, like, they're just there to be killed off at the start. Like they, they, they're really about as, about as strong of characters as the, as the main, as the main characters in the movie. That's just how kind of weak they are. But, um, so going back to the, to the actual horror scenes, uh, I, I did think that they, again, from, from like a technical perspective, I do think that they were done pretty well. Like I thought that the use of the, um, like CGI or, or, or real crocodile footage. And I thought that that was done, um, pretty well uh the, the the director is really he know he kind of knows his stuff for this like even though this is kind of like a lower budget movie i remember um with crawl crawl wasn't exactly a a huge budget film either but uh, i do remember us talking about how kind of hokey the cgi was in yeah. that and he, i didn't really feel that here i thought they they kind of um it it, it found a, uh, a good balance between kind of um not showing too much of the crocodile but when they do show it it, it looks decent yeah definitely um, yeah yeah so um i know I, I did like when we did get some actual like horror stuff i do think that it, it was done pretty well i just think um because because it, it, it's not like a bloodthirsty movie and because the characters haven't really weren't really defined that much there what i wasn't really um, like I wasn't really uh, on the edge of my seat. Oh no! I, ho I hope nothing happens to these characters because I didn't really care. Uh, and at the same time, there wasn't a whole lot of gore in the film because it w the movie didn't have 
enough characters in the film to really to to have a a, a high body count. So yeah, uh, it it was effective when it was it was pretty effective when it actually got down to it. But um, yeah, I just I didn't I thought that like everything else, I think it probably could have done with a bit of work. What what did you think of the the, the more horror aspect of it? Yeah, look, I thought that was where um the tra- okay, I'm gonna make up a word here. The Trakianism came into <laughs> this movie because he does do that very well. Like it was the same in the Reef where um. I can say this because I interviewed him about it. He he is a huge fan of Jaws. It's a film that he goes back to time and time again. And you could have forgiven him if, when he did the reef, if he'd gone for the all-out shark shots like Spielberg did with um, with Jaws. Um, but he didn't. He again kept it to a very natural kind of feel because nine times out of ten they say when a swimmer get a, a surfer or a swimmer gets taken by a shark somebody swimming right next to them doesn't even see it happen like the person just disappears it it's not like what we're used to seeing in movies it's the same with croc attacks a lot of people say that like they hear a yell and the person is just gone it it's not like what it was like in rogue where you've got like this like, possessed crocodile, like, lunging out of the water to grab someone. It does happen, but most of the time, crocs are, like, a a silent killer. They come out of nowhere. I liked that this movie did have that in there, like, that it wasn't, um... Like, there's times in this film where the the person will be in the water and they just disappear out of sight, and then they'll suddenly be splashing at the other side of the cave because the, the croc has dragged the person there. Um, I, I really liked that. I, I kind of liked that Trauki didn't decide to make this movie like an all-out croc horror where you've got like a, a, a giant croc. I, when I was talking about this movie with someone yesterday, I said, I'm glad that they didn't make this movie like The Meg, where it's like some super crocodile. Sorry. It is just a natural kind of crocodile, because I love The Meg as a movie, but that movie goes out of its way to be be ridiculous, whereas this film is supposed to be a more natural kind of feel, and I actually feel that the horror elements of this film are the most natural elements of the film, but like what you said before, I didn't really care for the characters, so it wasn't like, oh my god, they just killed this guy, like, it was kind of like, oh yeah, he's gone now. Um, But, yeah, like and like I said before, the last 15 minutes of it, I thought, was where this movie, like, ramped up everything and was like, oh, man, I really love what they're doing right now. So, yeah, it is one of those movies where I don't think it it, it is as good as its predecessor, but it is a passable horror film, having said that. Yeah, like, you can, you can definitely see the uh, the Jaws influence in it. Like, um, I, I guess with, with Jaws, Spielberg didn't show too much of the shark because of how bad the uh the puppet looked like so they so they they didn't show it that much and that's kind of how they they got around that whereas in this i'm guessing that they didn't really have the budget for a whole lot of cgi they they probably couldn't i don't know i don't know how exactly they filmed it with the the real crocodile that's in the movie like what footage they actually have in the movie but um yeah that whole yeah that whole aspect of it's pretty pretty done pretty well just there is they know that there's a croc in there but we don't see it we just kind of see um we see kind of like shimmering in the water and and that's enough to know that they're in trouble yeah you know like i i I do i did like that i thought that was um that was pretty pretty well done just uh uh yeah just as far as yeah just character wise and story wise the movie just kind of was really um was really kind of let down by that like it you didn't really care about these the the journey of these characters, whereas again, like Crawl, you only had these you only had two characters, the father and the daughter, and so the, the, that whole movie was kind of about them bonding um, and their kind of estranged relationship, and and so by the end of the movie, you really did kind of care about the two of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. So whereas this one kind of I i was just there for the horror really you know i just i was just there for the uh the entertainment value of seeing people get torn up by a by a croc yeah so um yeah just uh yeah just kind of, kind of a, a movie that it despite its limitations of like um like budget budgetary and and things like that i think it it, it 
I, I think it, it, it was able to take, advan- take advantage of, of um, being filmed in certain ways to really kind of get around that. But yeah, just the, the like, you, like with a lot of films, just the, the, actual, the actual script is where it, where it actually failed, I think. Yeah, so I guess to finish off, uh, what are you going to give this one out of five? Uh, I'm going to give this one two out of five. Uh, I think that it was pretty, like I said, it was it was a passable uh, kind of horror film. I do wish that they had done. All, uh, I do wish that the script had been a lot better, um, and there had been a lot more, uh, a lot better characterization and, and a lot better uh, use of the characters in the movie, considering that how long we're kind of um we're kind of uh stuck with these characters and nothing really yeah nothing really uh happens between them you know yeah yeah yeah, uh, just uh three out of five for me so yeah i'm gonna give it two out of uh five as well i i I think i went into this movie with a lot more expectations because i i did like the original so much and i thought that it was um so creative on such a low budget Uh, and I, i don't know like i i almost wondered whether this movie would have been if i would have perceived it as a little bit better if it wasn't blackwater 2 like because i did like that first one so much like because the uh, aside from being people being eaten by crocodiles there's no link between the two films yeah. um so I, I, I was surprised to find out it was from the same director because like yeah just it, it really did seem like one of those movies that that's just you know, okay, well, there's a somewhat kind of popular popular film. We'll just tie the name to this new one. Yeah, yeah, it does. It feels a little bit weird that that, um, especially considering that, like, outside of film circles, like I said before, Rogue was the film that that did well at the box office. It wasn't Blackwater. Blackwater was kind of like the the lesser Rogue, but for people that were reviewing it, it was the other way around. People preferred Blackwater over Rogue, but yeah, I'm going to give this one 2 out of 5 as well. So that's both of us giving 2 out of 5 to Blackwater Abyss, the brand new horror film that's opening right around the world. Some places you'll see it in streaming, some in cinemas. But that's it for our reviews of Blackwater Abyss. Uh, we'll be back very, very soon with another episode of the Popcorn Conspiracy. I've been Dave G. And I've been Kyle. And we'll be back soon with another episode of The Popcorn Conspiracy.